Hi there, in this video, I'm going to start Semantic Manager software. During that, I explain how the wizard window can be used to create a new project, and also how a simple program can be tested without any real PLC using the Semantic Manager Simulator PLCC. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller-based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Okay, let's start the video by launching Semantic Manager software. Okay, at the beginning, the wizard window appears automatically. From here, I can disable or enable this window or click here to close it. Let me explain how it can be used to create a new project. Naturally, each PLC station has at least one CPU. For now, let's select this one, CPU 315-2DP. After that, I can assign a name to the selected CPU and also determine its MPI address. Okay, after selecting the CPU, I can determine which organization blocks I will need to use in my project and also my preferred language for them. By default, the OB1 block is selected as the main block. It's executed cyclically when the PLC is in the running mode. Notice I can click here to see more details about each organization block. I explained OB1 in the previous video. So let me select another one. For example, OB81. Okay, OB81 is executed whenever an event occurs that is triggered by an error or fault related to the power supply or the backup battery. I don't want to use this block right now, so let me return to the wizard window. Another useful organization block is OB100. This block is executed once when the CPU is going to be started. At the bottom, there are three languages, a statement list, ladder diagram, and function block diagram. I can choose one of them for the selected organization blocks. After that, I can choose a name for the new project and finally click on the finish icon to create my new project. Alright, I created my new project based on the selected settings on the wizard window. This is my project name, which includes only one Sematic 300 station with this CPU model. It only has two blocks, OB1 and OB100. Remember, the wizard window is accessible under the file menu. Also, an empty project can be created using the new item. Okay, I added this Sematic 300 station using the wizard window. I can also right click on the empty space and add other stations manually. For example, if you want to write and test your programs without any hardware, you can select this item, S7 program. Similarly, let's add a Semantic 400 station. Note that I'm recording this course based on an S7300 CPU, but most of the contents of the course 
can be used for somatic forehand head stations as well. Now let's write a simple program and test it without any PLC. As I mentioned before, Obi-Wan is the main organization block. It can be found inside the blocks folder. Otherwise, you can right click and add it. When I open it for the first time, this window appears. I can determine a symbolic name or a comment for that. Now let me select the ladder language diagram and then click on OK to open it. Alright, whenever I double click on each block, this window appears. Here I can write my program using the ladder elements on the left side. If you remember, the three types of memories were explained in the previous video. Now let's use a bit of the input image memory and also a bit of the main memory to activate a bit of the output image memory. Okay, as you see, my program is similar to this electrical circuit. Let me test it. Now I want to test the program without any PLC. First, let's click on this icon to launch the simulator. As you see, here is a CPU with three modes, a stop, run, and run P, as well as a real CPU. Well, let's have a better view by changing the size and position of the window. Also, let's go to the view menu and enable this item, always on top. Okay, let's continue. I need to select the connection type between the virtual CPU and my computer. For now, select the MPI port. Also, I can click here to reset the CPU. Now, let's select the OB1 dialog and download it to the virtual CPU. Okay, this message says the ob one block is being processed by another application or another user. So let me close this window and then continue the downloading process. Because my project only includes a simple and short program inside the ob one block, it was downloaded quickly. As you see, to test my program, I need an input module, an output module, and also I need to access this bit of memory. So let's use these icons to add the desired modules besides the virtual CPU. Well, pay attention to these addresses. For example, I can use this window to access the 7 bits of the first byte of the main memory, M0.0, M0.1 till M0.7. All right, I've transferred my program to the virtual CPU. Now let's click on this icon to enable the online mode to see how the program is executed on the CPU. As you see, now the virtual CPU is in a stop mode. Let me run it. Now I can use these virtual modules to test my program. All 
also when the online mode is selected I can right click and change the status of the addresses related to the main memory notice this way cannot be used to change the input addresses like this one okay let's stop the cpu and disable the online mode I tested this simple program using the Semantic Manager Simulator. As you see, for the Semantic 300 station, there is an S7 program folder under its CPU. So I can easily copy the contents inside this S7 program folder, like the OB1 block, and use them for the other stations. Now let's reset the virtual CPU and transfer the Semantic 300 station project into the virtual CPU. Note that compared to the previous project, the Semantic 300 station has a CPU and also an MPT block, OB100. But the main programs inside the OB1 block are the same. In consequence, the performances of these two projects are the same. Okay, the Semantic 300 station was transferred into the virtual CPU. Let's test its program using the simulator. Alright, in this video I'll explain the wizard window and also how a program can be tested using the Semantic Manager Simulator without any PLC. In the next video, I'll start a new project and configure my PLC station manually inside Semantic Manager. Also, I'll test a simple program with that. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video. If you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.